Welcome back to Public Affairs on Peach. It is National Immunization Week, and you just heard about the importance of vaccinating children around the world for diseases. But what about here in the U.S.? Take a look now at the current recommendation immunization schedule for children during their first year of life. Children in America are routinely vaccinated against hepatitis B, pertussis, measles, mumps, and rubella. But are so many vaccinations safe? Earlier this year, I sat down to talk with two experts regarding vaccination. We are joined this morning, Dr. Dan Blumenthal and Scott Laster. Uh, Dr. Blumenthal is a medical epidemiologist as well as pediatrician. He has worked at the Center for Disease Control and the World Health Organization Smallpox Eradication Program in India and in Somalia. Scott Laster is a board member for the Coalition for Safe Minds. Safe Minds is an organization that funds research uh, to determine the causes of autism and has developed an informational website called smartvax.com. Uh, gentlemen, good morning to you both. Good morning. good morning. Dr. Blumenthal, I want to begin with you. You've traveled all over the world. I'm sure you have seen a lot of things when it comes to vaccinations and the importance of them. Why do you believe it is so important for children who come into this world to be vaccinated? Well, unfortunately, we are not rid of all the diseases that used to afflict kids commonly in this country and are now almost no longer seen because of immunization and vaccination. So we, of course, no longer see smallpox. That's been eradicated. Uh, we rarely see measles. We rarely, almost never see polio. Uh, but there's a caveat that goes with that, and that is that these diseases still exist in the world, and they get imported into the United States. And kids who are not immunized against measles and polio and diphtheria and whooping cough, all those other diseases, are still at risk for getting those same diseases that could have so easily been avoided if they'd been immunized. Doctor, did it surprise you the other day when the Super Bowl happened that there was somebody there that had the measles and there were thousands of people that were exposed to it? It didn't surprise me because, uh, as may have been mentioned earlier, they've had a huge outbreak of measles in Europe mm -hmm. uh, over the past year, 26,000 cases of measles, nine deaths. And so the probability that somebody traveling to Europe and coming back here could have been exposed there and brings the disease back here is, is not surprising. And that's the kind of thing that we have to be vigilant uh, about if we're going to keep outbreaks from happening here as they have in the past. And we had over 200 cases of measles in the U.S. last year among kids who had not been immunized for one reason or another. Doctor, in the years that you've been doing this, have you ever seen a case where a child has been vaccinated and then in an end result has become far worse than they were before they got vaccinated? No, I, I haven't. No side effects to the well, effect as, that, as your, to the effect as, that as your long term side right, effects. No, as your previous guest mentioned, you can run a little fever, you have soreness at the injection site. Temporary. But no, but no, right. These are temporary side effects and mild side effects, but I've never seen a long term side effect. All right, I now want to bring in Scott Laster. Scott, good, good to have you here with us Thank this you. morning, and I want to continue this dialogue. You are not necessarily against vaccines, correct? That's correct. Okay, yeah. so explain to me a little bit what Safe Minds is and what the message you're trying to get out is. Well, the message Safe Minds is trying to get across is since the mid-1980s, we've had a tripling of the vaccine schedule for children in the first 15 months of life. That uh, corresponds with dramatic increases in allergies, asthma, ADHD, and autism. And if you look at what has and hasn't been studied, generally with the exception of asthma, these chronic, long-term chronic health conditions have not been studied in children who received versus did not receive vaccines. So we want to raise attention to that. We're advocating for vaccine injury research. It would be, our, it is our goal to find if there is a cause from vaccine schedule in these long-term chronic health conditions to find it so that then the vaccines could be improved and avoid those vaccine injuries. Do you believe autism is a result of children being vaccinated? I do think a regressive autism, yes. As far as uh, not every case, because we do know that some children develop regressive autism who are not vaccinated, but there is plausible hypotheses that have not yet been studied as to how vaccines could cause autism. And yes, I think that we will find, once that research is done, we will find a correlation. But nothing yet has been proven. And, and, and I want to ask you this question. If doctors do find, because of medical advances, right, there's going to be a continual medical advancement throughout our lifetime. Mm -hmm. And doctors are going to find cures to certain diseases. And let's talk about HIV. Let's talk about cancer. If doctors find cures for these and they create a vaccine, would you not then want your child to get vaccinated for that? Well, I would want to, as any parent, and what's 
we advocate in SmartVax is to weigh the risk versus benefits, such as any new medicine. If there's a greater risk profile from the medicine itself of injury than versus the risk of the disease, then, I, then a parent can make a decision whether that's something that children should take. Well, what vaccinations are out there that you think the risks are too high that you don't want your child to well, take? Well, just uh, we can talk through the course of this about hepatitis B and uh, the pertussis and measles. But measles, just for example, there was a study in December 2011 in Canada of, which showed a 1 in 168 children who vaccinate, uh, it, it results in an emergency room or hospitalization. And if you look at the risk profile that we've calculated in SmartVax, the, uh, the risk profile of measles, let me make sure I check my numbers. In a highly vaccinated population, you're talking a 1 in 16 million risk of injury or death. In a low vax population where there's no more herd immunity, you're talking one in 16,000 range. So I think it's legitimate for a parent to look at that and question, is that risk profile for that particular vaccine um, more risk than the benefit? And doctor, I'll, I'll now uh, ask you the question from what he said. If everyone has gotten the measles shot, right? Up pretty much a lot of people, I will say most people get the measles shot. Uh, a parent may say, well, then why does my child need to get it? If everyone else has already gotten it, right, then the risk of my child actually contracting measles is very low. So why would I want to put a, a vaccine into my child? Well, you, you have a point. There are, a lot, there are some free riders, kids who will never get measles because all the other kids have been vaccinated and so they haven't been exposed. But the more we are cautioned about measles vaccine, the more we are exposed to doubts and we are told that this may be causing autism or other problems, the fewer kids will get immunized and we're going to see more outbreaks and we're going to see more kids having damage as a result of getting measles. Do you believe that vaccinations, as uh, Mr. Lasser has pointed out, do you believe that the vaccinations have, has led to an increase of children getting asthma? No, the, the effects of, of uh, Immunizations, the ill effects of immunizations have been well studied, or the purported ill effects of immunizations have been well studied, and there's been no evidence that has turned up to link immunization to asthma or autism or any of the other things that we're concerned about. Sure, there has been an increase, but the fact that there are more immunizations and there's more asthma and there's more autism doesn't mean that one causes the other. You could just as easily blame it on cell phones. All right, we are going to continue this conversation right after a commercial break. Stay with us.